I'm Zorin. Thank you. <laughs> Great job. Um, okay, next we're going to go to the gentleman from Michigan, Mr. Bergman. General. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, six years ago, there were a few of us on this desk who joined the Budget Committee as freshmen. The first uh, document we were given by the Congressional Research Service was a 24-page document called The Evolution of Federal Budgeting for us to study as new members. I still have that document, and on day one, after review, I retitled it When Two and Two Cease to Equal Four. So when I look at basic math, and we is, there's a joke within the Marine Corps, math for Marines, it's pretty simple. What is two and two equal? So when I ask the questions that in our limited time here in dialogue, if I ask yes or no, I would appreciate a yes or no answer. There's gonna be some questions that you'll be able to expand on, but I would appreciate in the interest of time and, and the constituents who are listening to this hearing. So let's talk about small businesses. Would expanding Medicare payroll taxes increase the tax burden for small businesses? Yes or no? Not under 400,000. Okay. Would ending the small business deduction increase the tax burden for small businesses? Anyone make it under 400,000? No. Okay. So if, as you said earlier this month, that President Biden would work with Congress to extend the tax cuts for those making below 400,000 that was first passed as part of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. Uh, however, I mean, that was the statement. However, th this budget assumes that these provisions will expire as currently scheduled in 2025. So are we telling the folks that after 2025, they're fair game? At under 400,000? Mr. Bergman, this is a 2024 budget, but we felt it necessary to put a statement of principles because we know people would be interested. Is they, for that person so in, who's out there, can should they expect that after this, that they're going to be fair game? No. The budget so, makes clear that the president would support extending tax cuts for those making so, under 400,000. So we're going to extend them. Ed, is there those making under 400,000? Does the president very, have a plan for that and, extension and so black, that the, the people has their starting it, their business or raising their family? Does, it is it is in the budget the, the pre, clearly written that the president supports uh it's one thing to support, it's another thing to enact. Well, we, we and have I got it. So I, I would like to move on here because again as the kind of questions I get asked by the folks back home. Um, the president's budget uh, requests a total of $2 billion for the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and Explosives to, quote, increase regulation of the firearms industry, among other directives. This is despite the fact that the ATF is already reaching beyond their, far beyond their congressional mandate and pushing new restrictions that violate the Second Amendment. Will this two billion of new funding for firearm regulations be used to create new red flag laws, greater burdens on lawful gun owners, blanket bans on assault style rifles, or elimination of manufacturer immunity? Will any of those occur under this $2 billion expansion. Congressman, I'm sure you saw the president uh, sign an executive order, uh, doing as much as we can administratively uh, to make sure, do whatever we can uh, to stop these mass shootings uh, and keep hands of guns and, and So this money would and, be and used the to support. Yes, yeah, and the mass shootings, and no one in this room I know wants to not do everything at all possible to prevent this. Last time I checked, the bad guys don't care about laws. The bad guys don't care about rules. So we can add laws and rules and restrictions all day long, but the bad people don't. So I would su suggest this administration and in any future administration consider the what drives the behavior 
So with that, I'll yield back.